today, Taira is an unstoppable storm. I remember when I first came to Korea about two years ago, uh, there was a big earthquake. You guys know an earthquake at Pohang. There was a big earthquake. I think it was like 5.5 scale, I think it was. Uh, and my wife was there at home. Uh, well, she wasn't home. She was at somewhere else at home. It was my grand her, her mother and my kids were staying at the apartment. And when the earthquake hit, uh, my firstborn, he immediately jumped under the table. He went under the table and he was telling uh, his sister, to come on. Come here, get down. He was telling grandma to, come on, get down here and hide. And after the initial, uh, the earthquake had passed, um, they decided to go downstairs. So he took his grandmother's uh, backpack on his back and uh, my grandma, our mother-in-law, she had to carry the youngest, Jue. He's walking around now, but back then he couldn't walk. He could barely just roll over, right? So he, she was carrying him, my daughter, my second, Juan, holding her grandma's hand and going downstairs. We were on the 15th floor. <laughs> so going down, all the way down to the first floor. And I remember my, uh, my, my mother-in-law telling me that Juye, oh, the firstborn, He's really a firstborn, right? He was like, he would go down, come on, grandma. <laughs> and he would go down, come on, grandma. He was really helpful during the time of um, earthquake. You know, you never really know what you're made of until you go through a, a crisis in your life. You never really know what's really inside of you until you go through a problem, what really comes out. I remember hearing a story where a pastor in Japan, when there's an earthquake, right? He ran out the house and left his wife. <laughs> and then his wife told him, how could you leave me? How could you leave your wife? And then he said, I don't know. I just, I just <laughs> it comes out, <laughs> whatever is inside. I have to save myself. Uh, today we're talking about the unstoppable storm. And the whole chapter 27 is talking about Paul's voyage now on his way, taking the ship, going to Rome. Okay, and along the way, they're met with a mighty, mighty storm, right? And it's it's about how he dealt with it and the the event that took that inspired took took place there. So when you think about all these things, it's very important what's really inside of you. What do you really have in your heart, right? What do you treasure in your heart? That will what that's what's going to come out when you're faced with the prime realm. We see two types of people in today's passage. We see one type of person who do not receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit versus we see another type of person who receives the guidance of the Holy Spirit, has confidence. And how they react to the unstoppable storm is very, very different. Right? And that's what we're going to talk about. As you see today's message, think about it. In which side do I stand? When, when, when an unstoppable storm comes in my way, which side do I stand? Am I on the side of receiving the guidance of the Holy Spirit? Or am I on the side of not receiving the guidance of the Holy Spirit? Obviously, the answer should be, I really desire, Lord, to be in the side where I receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And that's the heart, the covenant we need to hold on to before we even begin our message. So, the unstoppable storm. How do you receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit? Before we do, number one, let's look at the characteristics of those who don't receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You have to know the wrong to be able to do the right, okay? Without the, uh, the word of God, the law, we would not be able to determine what is good or bad, okay? So when you see uh, a negative things in your, in your life, that doesn't mean to be discouraged by it. It's God showing us, hey, those are the things you're missing out. So I'm giving you this message so that you can receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So first, let's look at the characteristics of those who don't receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit. In verse 10, it reads this, saying, Sirs, I perceive that the voyage will be with injury and much loss, not only of the cargo and the, and the ship, but also to our lives. So this is the warning Paul is giving the centurion. Right? When the centurion is saying, let's go on this voyage, Paul says, hey, we should not go. It's, it's, it's going to be a loss, not only to the ship, but to our lives. It's very dangerous. So who is Paul, guys? Who is Paul? Paul is the messenger of God. Amen? Paul carries God's covenant. Amen? He is being led by the word of God. Every decision he's been making so far was based upon in fulfillment of the word of God. 
So Paul carries himself the word of God. Okay? Not that everything he says is the word of God. No, he carries the word of God. So what are they doing? They're ignoring the word of God. Right now, what's the system God placed to relay his message to his people? It's called church. Amen? And God raised pastors. God raises elders, deacons, and so other peoples, and leaders of the church. And the system is God speaks to the pulpit, giving you the message. Amen? Amen. We're not here to learn about the Bible. Rather, that's a part of it, but we're here to receive the word of God. Amen? Amen? I mean, if that wasn't the case, I can just take a Bible, flip it to a page, right? And point to a finger at a certain page and goes, oh, that was Mark chapter 5, okay, verse 2. What does it read? Okay, that's going to be my message for today. Why don't we do that, right? But that, why, why do we not do that? Because that's not the biblical method of how God relays the message to his people. God always spoke through the messenger, right? And the messenger God raises as pastors, as, as, as leaders in the church, right? So what do, they, what do they ignore? They're ignoring the word of God, right? First thing that we must be holding on to in our life to truly receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit is the word of God, the pulpit message, Amen. Corona, COVID-19, what's the biggest hit within, within, in a Christian circle? It's, it's worship, isn't it? We're not physically able to come to worship. I mean, because of the virus, right? The, the, it's, it's for human safety. And so to, in, to stop the spread of this disease, in a way that we're physically kind of stopped of coming to, to worship. Of course, we got the live worship going on right now. And I'm sure John, listening, I'm sure Laura, listening, I'm sure uh, uh, different members of our, of our uh, service uh, is listening. You know, uh, one of my members texted me saying she's kind of sick with the fever. I said, okay, I stay home. Stay home and enjoy the live worship, right? But wherever you are, you must be victorious in worship, amen? Because that is the first thing that Satan blocks. That is the first thing that Satan works, just like right now. They're ignoring the word of God, right? The messenger of God, giving them exact guidance, and yet they're ignoring it. Why do they ignore it? Verse 11, but the centurion paid more attention to the pilot and to the owner of the ship than to what Paul said. So what does the centurion doing? He's not listening to the word of God. Rather, he's listening to the worldly knowledge. Rather, he's listening to the experience of the world. Oh, these things I trust. The word of God, I don't trust. Right? The things that I can't see, feel, or touch, I don't trust. And yet, this, these worldly things I trust. That's why they don't put the value in the word of God. When something happens in our lives, guys, when something bad happens, when something like this storm happens, and the unstoppable storm happens, how do you react? What do you seek? What's the answer? Where do you go to find your answer? Here, we see that the centurion goes to what? Paying more attention to the pilot, to the owner of the ship. Why? Of course, they know the sea, right? They've been out on sea many, many times. They are experts, of course. But they are not the experts of the word of God. Amen? Amen. God is in control of the universe. Amen? Amen. He's a, we serve a sovereign Lord. He's in sovereign God. He's in control of their entire universe. Amen? Amen. There's nothing that takes place on the history of mankind and history of, uni history of the universe where God is blind to. God knows everything about your life. Amen. God knows everything that's taking place in your life. The deep things that your closest person do not know about, God knows. God knows your heart. God knows. God says, I, you are my child. You are in my plan. Amen? Amen? This is the identity that we carry, and yet... Those who don't receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit, they pay more attention to the worldly things, to the physical things. These are the things that we need to quickly see in our life. Am I searching more on the physical things? Am I depending more on the worldly knowledge rather than the amazing identity that I have? Amazing the word of God that God has already spoken to me. These are the things that we need to check to truly, truly receive guidance of the Holy Spirit. Verse 12 says this, the majority decided to put out to sea, right? Verse 12. So after speaking to the centurion, after speaking to the pilot, the owner of the ship, the majority saw what? Hey, let's go. 
and, and go about our business. Let's ignore Paul. Who is this guy? He doesn't know about the sea. He doesn't know anything. Let's ignore the word of God. What does God, what can God do right now? Right? What can God do right now with Corona taking place? Isn't that what the worldly people say? Don't go to church. Oh, dangerous. <laughs> oh, go to, go to, go to your, your, your cafes. <laughs> go to the Norebangs. Have fun. Right? Go to your restaurants. Oh, don't go to church. <laughs> the church, I said this before, right? We, it's the safest place amongst any public buildings. Amen? Amen. <laughs> okay. Um, so they, they follow the majority. They follow the majority. Uh, democracy, <laughs> majority. How do we make decisions? The majority rules. Church is not majority rule. Do you guys know that? Church is not a democracy, okay? It's not about, okay, who decides? All right, ha more than half people agrees to do something. Okay, let's do it. We are God-centered, amen? amen? We follow the word of God, amen? amen? What is God wanting in our church? What is God wanting in our worship? What is God wanting in our life? in my family. That's how you make your decisions and receive your guidance. So many times worse, we are deceived by the physical things, materialistic things. These are the things Satan uses to keep us away from receiving the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And a lot of times, uh, we just live without thinking about these things, right? We just do things or let things happen according to the situation. Don't just let things happen. Receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit, guys. Amen? Amen? Today, what I'm telling you is this, that there are unstoppable storms in our life. There are things when you see yourself and you see the issue in front of you, like, wow, I don't know what to do. I can't resolve this problem on my own. What am I supposed to do? There are times when you feel this way. Well, those are the times when it's easy for us to make mistakes. Like we depend on like these other people, like the centurion did. Like following the majority, following the flow of things, following the world, making a decision based upon physical things. The times when you're hit with the storm are the times when you truly need to dig deep and hold on to the covenant, the word of God, God has given to us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, you know, um, the unstoppable storm right, comes in our lives. So first thing we need to understand about the unstoppable storm is the characteristics of those who don't receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Now, when that's taking place, what happens when the unstoppable storm hits? Number two, verse 15 reads this, And when the ship was caught and could not face the wind, we gave way to it and were driven along. What happened? They are driven along. They are driven along by the issue. You are dragged by the problem. When you don't receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and when the unstoppable storm hits you in your life, you know what's going to happen? You're going to be dragged by it. You're going to be dragged by it. Uh, you know, I, I remember having a Bible study long one time. Somebody introduced me to this teenager. And a teenager, from what I heard, Keep this person telling me, saying he's a very destructive kid. He's like this little gangster kid. He's always doing bad things, right? You, can you go and talk to him? <laughs> I was like, sure. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to him. So I met, I, met, I went, ding dong, I went to his house. I ring the bell. He comes out. He's, 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 like, he's like Asian gangster. He's got the like, hair all bald, right? He, he tattoo in his face, like, you, you know. And he's like, who are you? <laughs> oh, I'm Pastor Tom. <laughs> and he's like, I, you know, mom told me about you. I, I, can I come and talk to you a little bit? He's like, yeah, sure. He looks like a killer, but when you talk to him, he's the most sweetest little teenager. The more I talk to him, he's the kindest kid. He's so nice to me. He's bringing me water. Like, oh, can I get you something? Oh, thank you for coming by. He's the nicest kid. Nicest kid. Yet, yet when issues in his life, he has lots of scars from his parents, from his father, very abusive father and things like that. So he takes out his anger in the, in the streets. Something happens, he gets angry. When he's angry, get out of his way because he's going to be destroying stuff. That's the kind of problem he's causing. But whenever, every week I go, we do Bible study. He's the ni nicest kid to me. Like, are you doing, is this the same kid that you're describing? To almost that I couldn't even tell. Well, he has a brother, older brother, who's like this, you know, very, he's, he's another, like, gangster type or whatever. And he really likes his brother. Well, his brother saying, hey, I don't like that church. 
that church is weird. Don't meet this pastor. So this teenage that I'm meeting, he loves his brother. He does everything his brother says. So one day he stops meeting me. Right? He doesn't want to meet. My brother says, I can't come. He starts giving me excuses. Well, I can't break into his house. <laughs> so I did the, my best to meet up, meet up, but he couldn't. He didn't. Um, well, months had passed, years had passed. I get a phone call. Teenager died. Teenager died, right? Uh, what was the, he committed suicide. He committed suicide. So I, I went to the funeral. I went to the funeral. And guess who I meet at the funeral? I meet his brother. I meet his brother. Uh, after, during the funeral, we talk and things like that. And we and, and we go to um, we talk to him after the funeral, and he's crying and crying and crying in front of me, right? And he's regretting that time where he stopped me from meeting his brother, right? He says after you left and things like that, I tried to help my brother, but he just won't change. He says you just you just won't listen to me anymore. He got worse and worse and worse. I tried to help him, but he won't listen to me. His condition got worse and worse, and ended up, he ended up committing a suicide. All right. You know, if you don't have the answer, I'm telling you, there, nothing's going to work. What is the answer that you have when you're hit with the unstoppable storm? Do you think you can resolve it on your own? Do you think you can resolve things on your own? Do we, are we that powerful in our life? Are we that, that strong, physically, spiritually, or whatever, in any way? The only answer we have is Christ. Amen? It's the word of God. Amen? Amen? Satan knows this. Satan knows only thing that you, that the power that we have is the word of God. So he does everything in, in his power to make us lose worship. Make us lose hold of the word of God. Right? Make us think about the worldly things. So that we are, just as this ship was, was driven along by the storm. The ship no longer functions. It's been driven along, being dragged along by the issues and the problem that you're facing. When the unstoppable storm hits and you don't have Christ, guess what? You're going to be dragged along by the problem. Verse 19, they threw away their ship's tackle overboard. The tackle of the ship is what, the, what you steered the ship with, okay, back then. They threw that overboard. Why? Because it was more weight. They're trying to lessen the wave of the ship, so they throw that overboard. Neither, verse 20, neither sun nor star appeared for many days. Sun and the stars is how you navigate back then. Okay, how you navigate. So meaning what? They couldn't steer the ship anymore. They don't even know where they're going anymore. I mean, steer, is, steering the ship is talking about knowledge and human power. Wisdom, isn't it? Their technology, right? My human strength. Looking at the stars and the, and the moon and being able to navigate. He's talking about all human knowledge that they obtained. What happened? All those goes out the window. It doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't matter how you're smart. It doesn't matter what you have or what you don't have. It doesn't, nothing's going to work. That's what this is saying. All your worldly wisdom experience is not going to help you. And that's what this Bible is saying. When the unstoppable storm hits, nothing matters. Whatever you have, whatever you don't have, it doesn't matter. It's not going to work. Verse 20, all hope of our being saved was at last abandoned. Abandoned, right? All hope was lost. So when the storm hits, they're being dragged along by the problem. Whatever they, th they believed in, they thought they could save them. All the material things and the physical things and the, or, or human relationships that they believed in, guess what? At the end, it was all hopeless. Nothing works. They become hopeless. All hope of being saved was abandoned. They gave up. They said, what? Well, nothing's going to work. We are going to die. Why do people commit suicide? Because they become hopeless. There is no hope. It's not, the, it's not that there's the, they're, they're can't handle the problem anymore. You know why people commit suicide? Because they see no hope. That's why they commit suicide. You know what the Bible says? Not only physically are they being dragged along like this. The Bible says spiritually, this is how we were born. We are dragged along in our faith and destiny of Satan. Dragged along. Whatever you think you can do, we live within sin and curse that no matter what you do, it's not going to work. We live in a background of hell where the end result says you are hopeless. Right? That's the spiritual background that mankind are born into. If that was it, and I finished my message here, 
I mean, lots of discouraged people, right? <laughs> but that's the reality of this world, guys. This is what they have. There is no hope. There is no hope. To those people out there in the world who are going through the issues and storms in their life, there is no hope, right? But to us, you know what God gave us? God says, offspring of women will come and crush the serpent's head. Amen? Amen. The blood sacrifice, when you put the blood of the lamb on their doorposts, the blood, the, the death angel will pass over that house. Amen? Offspring of the woman will come. That offspring has came, has he not? Right? The virgin shall be with, his, with, an, with the child. His name shall be Emmanuel. Amen. Just as we confessed, the son, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen? Amen? God gave us the one and only answer called Christ. In the unstoppable storm, right? Totally depraved mankind, God gave us a way out. Amen? Amen? That's the blessing that we carry. That's the strength of the message that we have. And that's who Paul was. Paul not only knew that, he absolutely believed it. And that's why he was receiving the guidance of the Holy Spirit, even in the midst of the unstoppable storm. So number three, what is the characteristics of those who receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit? Number one, they hold on to a heavenly purpose. To those who receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit, they're led by heavenly purpose. Heavenly mandate, in other words. Meaning what? They have a purpose given by God. Verse 23 says this, For this very night there stood before me an angel of the Lord, angel of God, to whom I belong. And whom I worship, verse 24. And he said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. And behold, God has granted you all, the, all those who sail with you. Amen? Amen? Where is Paul's confidence? Is in the word of God. Amen. He's not worried about the storm, is he? Right? To him, is this an unstoppable storm? No, it's not. To those people who don't have this message, they are, it's an unstoppable storm, isn't it? They all have given up hope. But Paul has absolute hope. Amen? Amen? It's not a hope from somebody telling you, oh, yeah, I'll help you. Don't worry. That's not the hope Paul has. Right? Oh, somebody will help me. That's not the hope Paul has. Paul has what? God has a purpose in which he will fulfill in my life. Amen? Amen. Therefore, I don't need to be afraid of this storm. Amen? Amen? Um, you know, I shared this before, but don't miss it and send me. You know, I shared it in, in, uh, as an evidence, right? Um, you know, I do have everything I need, so don't misunderstand when I say this. So when I, when I was coming from America to Korea, I had to sell my house, and sell my car, right? I had a nice house. <laughs> Not like nice houses. It was my house I was renting. <laughs> it, was, it was a nice place. We even had a, a pool nearby, right? We can, a community pool. We can go, it was a nice place. You know, it, it was a quiet neighborhood, suburban neighborhood. It was, it was nice. I had a nice car. It was a big car. <laughs> so when I decided to come to Korea, I had to give that up. And selling in a used car usually means you have to pay more <laughs> to sell the car. I don't get money, right? It wasn't a paid-off car. I had to pay money to s please take my car, right? <laughs> kind of like that situation. So all those gone, coming into America, I was living in my in-law's house, right? That's not an easy thing. <laughs> you try to live with her. <laughs> I was living in my in-law's place. It wasn't easy, right? So it's like she looks at me like uh, a failed man. <laughs> you know, okay, you're married, you're living with me, <laughs> kind of like that, right? Um, so, and then no car, no name, to, and things like that, right? And yet I had to go into uh, our seminary school here at RTS, a remnant seminary, and yet I don't have the money to go, right? All these things are an issue, but while I was being influenced by these things at the first few months, I was like, what am I doing here? I, like, I should have just stayed in America, right? Or I could have just, you know, lived comfortably there. What am I going through all this stuff the few months, right? Going through these things. In the midst of it, after Sunday message, I realized something. I was like, you know what? God sent me here with a purpose, right? If God says... I'm not going to pay you so you can't go to seminary. Guess what? Then it's not my, then God's, that's not God's plan, isn't it? I don't have to worry about it, right? If God wants to send me, he's going to send me. Amen? Amen. I started having confidence in the word of God. I started having confidence in the covenant God says 
he bestowed upon me. He says, I'm going to use you, Tom, to carry this name of the gospel to the 237 nations. I start believing in it. I start having strength from it, right? So financial issues did not affect me anymore. Living with my in-laws did not affect me anymore, right? I says, this is, I'm living in the kingdom of God, I said. <laughs> right? So this, I'm living in a new place where God bring about amazing answers. I started having confession of faith. When those things started taking place, I wasn't afraid of my situation anymore, right? And guess what? A week before the tuition was due, I just get a phone call out of nowhere. Somebody that I used to know who, who understand that, uh, understands that I'm going to seminary says, I want to pay for your seminary. Did I call her? <laughs> did I call? Hey, can you please pay me? <laughs> I never did that. I never discussed it, anything, any of these issues. I didn't even discuss it with my wife. My wife didn't even know that I didn't have money to go to seminary. She didn't know until like two days later. <laughs> I told her of this after it was taken care of, right? God took care of it, amen? amen. But in my heart, I, I was saying, even if he doesn't take care of me, it's okay. That was the kind of confidence I had. Even if God doesn't take care of me right now, it's fine. Because I know God will still fulfill his message. Amen? Amen. Guidance of the Holy Spirit. It's everything, guys. It's everything. When does it show? When the storm hits. It's time when the storm hits. Then God truly reveals his answers to you. Amen? Amen. So hold on to the heavenly purpose. What's your heavenly mandate? When you do that, you're not going to be influenced by your situation or your surrounding. Verse 25, he says, So take heart, men, for I have faith in God that, will, that it will be exactly as I have been told. Where is his faith in? His faith is in the word of God. So because his faith is in the word of God, he is not influenced by his surroundings, right? It doesn't matter how tough the situation may be. He knows God will fulfill his message. Amen? Not only does he overcome his surroundings, he transcends his surroundings. Amen? Uh, some people, the soldiers, were trying to leave the ship. Right? At the end of what Paul said, after listening to the Paul, they were saying, oh, let's, leave the, let's take, lower down this extra ship and let's take, go on here and leave the ship. Paul says, hey, if you leave the ship, you're going to die. If you're going to die. And you know what they do? They listen to Paul. They <laughs> listen to Paul. What was the beginning of this chapter? In the beginning of this chapter, nobody was listening to Paul. Let's listen to the owner. Let's listen to the pilot. Let's listen to the majority. Nobody's listening to Paul. Nobody's paying attention to the word of God. But the end of this chapter, what happened? They listened to Paul. Amen? They're now listening to the word of God. They're listening to the word of God. Paul has changed the people. Amen? That's the characteristics of those who receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Not only are you receiving the guidance of the Holy Spirit, by the answers that you receive, you change your environment. Amen? Amen. Amen. I pray all of us would be those ones who receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit, guys. Amen? Amen. In conclusion, become, take the flow of the unstoppable storm. Okay? We looked at the unstoppable storm where it stopped people. Well, now you become the unstoppable storm. Amen? You become the unstoppable storm. Amen? Amen? Amen. So first step is, hey, you need to receive that spiritual summit. Okay? The message God gives, focus on it. Whether in the morning or whether at night before you go to sleep, take this time and say, God, imprint, root, and nature this message in me, in my soul. Imprint it in me, Lord. So that when the storm hits, the message comes out. Right? The covenant comes out. God's word comes out. Not my fear, not the surrounding, not the worthy knowledge, right? But your guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen? You can, that is the only way you become the answer of nobody. Meaning, you get to know what nobody knows. You get to do what nobody can do. You get to go where nobody can go. Amen? Nobody, right? You be that person where nobody else can do. You become that person, right? When everybody says, hey, it's not going to work, you become the person, you make it work. Amen? Amen. You know, Corona, COVID-19, as you guys know, the uh, whole time I've been giving worship, I was speaking to a screen, right? While you guys are online, I was speaking to a screen. Now it's like, oh, I get to speak to people. But even now, we, we know we're, we're a lot of empty seats, right? You know, uh, COVID-19, post-COVID-19 says, 
religious gathering is going to be tough. Evangelism is going to be tough, isn't it? Right? Bringing people to church is going to be tough. That's what kind of knowledge? Human knowledge. Okay? If God works, he can do it. Amen? Amen. Let us receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You become the unstoppable storm. Amen? Amen? Then the next answer is the answer of everybody. Everybody. Verse 44, at the end of this chapter, it says this. And so it was that all were brought safely to land. Amen? In the beginning, they ignore the word of God. They are struck with the storm. They're lost with all hope. At the last, after Paul speaking the word of God, what happened? They were all brought safely to land. Amen? Amen. Everybody was saved. That's the kind of answer that God will carry through you guys. Amen? Because of you receiving the guidance of the Holy Spirit, God will save your friends. God will save your family. God will save your workplace, your school. The very region, the town that you live, the very church that you serve. Amen? Amen. Everybody will be saved because of you, guys. Amen? Amen? The unstoppable storm. Which side are you going to stand? In the side of those who don't receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit? Or in the side of those who do receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit? I pray all of us will become those ones, witness of the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So that you become the unstoppable storm for God. Amen? Amen. Why don't we take a minute to pray together, guys? Uh, we know there are issues in our life, but God says, hey, don't worry, I'm going to guide you through. God, give us the covenant so that we can hold on to your message and receive your guidance, Father. Let's pray together this time. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the message you've given to us. We know that there are many people going through hardships because of the coronavirus or whatever issues in their life. But God, we know that you have given us all the answers. May we be the witnesses to receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit so that many people can come to hear and be saved through the hearing of the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. We pray all these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.